All right, so this video is all about two theorems we're going to be talking about this year. These are two things about triangles you need to know. The first one is the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, this one's pretty easy because you already know what an isosceles triangle is. It's a triangle that has exactly two sides the same. So if you look at the picture that I have on the screen, these two sides are the same because this is an isosceles triangle. But what you may not have known is that the angles across from those sides are also the same. Now what I mean by across is across from this side and across from this side. Also you may hear it called opposite. The opposite angle is are congruent. <clears throat> so what this means is that if you know one side of the isosceles triangle, you know the other side. So if you're given this and they say that this side is 4 and ask you what this one is, you can say x equals 4 because you know that that is an isosceles triangle. So a way that you might see this, these are some types of problems you might see. So here's the first one, solve for x and y. So I'm looking at this and I know that triangles add up to be 180 degrees. And one thing that I know is that because these two sides are congruent, that means that these two angles have to be congruent. So I know automatically that x is equal to 65 degrees. I don't have to do any calculations for that. Now, the other one is y. Well, this is where our knowledge of triangles comes in. We know that they add up to be 180. So I'm going to add 65 and 65 to give me 130. 180 minus 130 gives me 50. So y is 50 degrees. And all of that came from the basic knowledge of the isosceles triangle, that if two sides are congruent, then that means that the angles opposite of those sides are also congruent. Now coming down to the next one, this one has more algebra in it. Again, though, we know that these two angles are congruent, so that means that these two sides have to be congruent. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, so if they're congruent, that means that they're equal to each other. So that's how I set them up using algebra. I'm going to set them equal to each other. x plus 5 equals 2x minus 2. I'm going to solve for x, add 2 to both sides, subtract 1x. That gives me x equals 7. So there's my answer, x equals 7. All right, the next theorem we're going to talk about is not really a theorem. It's more just the angle side relationships and triangles. So look at the example. What do you notice about the lowest, the smallest uh, side and the smallest angle? What do you notice about the largest side and the largest angle? Well, here's the smallest side. And here's the smallest angle. They're across from each other. They're opposite of each other. Here's my biggest angle. It's across from my biggest side. My middle angle is across from my middle side. That is the relationship. Largest angle is opposite. Is opposite. Largest side, or longest side actually. And smallest angle is opposite smallest side. And of course the one in the middle is opposite the middle length. So a couple of practice problems on this one. Generally you're just going to be asked which angle is the largest or it might be to put them in order from smallest to biggest. In this one, which angle is the largest? Well, first I identify the largest side. That's this one, and I look across from it, and I know immediately that that's the largest angle. Angle U is the largest angle. Now, coming down, which side is the longest? Well, the first thing I need to do is find the biggest angle. That's my 70 degrees. I look across, and I say, okay, so it's XY. Now you need to make sure you put this in the correct terms. It has to be x, y with a line over it to say line x, y. So that's it. That's all the theorem. 
So now just complete the questions on the website and you're good to go.